video is sponsored by myself. If you're a photographer and you're after some really clean presets to speed up your workflow and just have really clean skin tones, check out the link in the description for my preset pack. Every pack sold really supports the channel and helps me create content for you guys. For all of you that have bought my presets in the past, I really appreciate it. Thanks for supporting my channel. So I'm sitting up here at the ski field on the Awakuni side of Mount Ruapehu. Uh, I've come down for a couple of days just to adventure around the area in the van and uh, have a play with the Nikon Z6 Mark II. Uh, I have the 50mm 1.2S with me and I also have the 14 to 24mm 2.8. Um, so it's supposed to be really clear tonight but there's a bit of cloud around now so I think either way we're going to get some really amazing shots. Uh, I was planning on doing some astrophotography up here in the mountain, getting a bit of snow in there. In there. Um, we'll see how that goes. It was a pretty nice trip down. The road I took, I, I hadn't really taken before and it was quite scenic and there was a lot of kind of old buildings along the way. Uh, I stopped off at one and had a really good look around uh, and it was really cool actually. There was like an old drink bottle in there, I don't even know what you'd call it, some kind of clay pot. Uh, sitting next to an old fireplace and the house was just falling to bits so um, I went in and I didn't actually go in the house but I got some photos around yeah I really like this 50 mil I took some photos as well with my 35 mil film camera I don't even know what film is in it <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's Ilford black and white it's half used and I haven't I shot the old shots a long time ago so I thought I'd bring that down and uh, take some shots with that as well and just use up that film I have some portrait 400 that I've been needing to use for a while so um, if I manage to soak up this roll, I'll, I'll chuck a roll of portrait in there. So back to the Nikon, I have tried them in the past, I tried the Z6 and I have had a go with the Z6 II but not uh, a really thorough go. Um, so this time I've had it for about a week and I've spent the first few days just setting it up and getting to know the camera because um, I feel like it's a little bit unfair to review a camera that's not set up properly. Like the Sony cameras for example, if you get a Sony camera from a store and take it out of the box, they're set up quite stupid. You know, like they're not set up intuitively straight off the bat. You have to go into the menus and set everything up. So I talked to my friend Jonathan Suckling who's a pro wedding photographer and shoots with the Z6 II. Uh, he had a video on setting up the focus system and all that. And I've gone ahead and done all that and yeah, I've had a really good play with it. Um, honestly, I think it's a really great camera. It you know, has some things that I like better than the Sony cameras. In some things, I definitely prefer the Sony. But um, you know, overall, I think if you were wanting to stick to your Nikon system, I don't know why I'm giving you guys a conclusion at the start of the video, but uh, you know, if you want to stick to your Nikon system, it's a, it's a great camera. And um, you know, I don't think you'd be disappointed at the end of the day. Switching systems can be a really expensive, costly thing and just mentally draining having to learn a new system so you know that's not for everybody some people want to switch to sony some people don't and that's totally fine i think it's just important to stick to what you like best so i thought first we should get into the body um and how it feels in the hand oh my hands are filthy i've just been working on the van it's getting a bit hot coming up this mountain but anyway how it feels in the hand i do like it if i'm being totally honest i still prefer my sony uh, the, I have the latest series of so the A9 Mark II with the finger grip on it. Um, it definitely feels a little bit better. Not that the grip is bad itself, the main issue I'm having is I have large hands and the custom function buttons on the inside here are really hard not to press. I find myself pressing them by mistake all the time um, to the point where I almost have to disable them. But I think if I had a grip on it, it probably wouldn't be as bad because I'm because I don't have a grip and my pinky's falling off. I'm holding it really firmly, you know, with my top the top part of my hand, and that's causing me to press those function buttons. But it's just something to note if you have large hands, you know, that those function buttons could be an issue. Otherwise, uh, I like how it works. I like the button layout. Um, I like where the ISO dial is. One thing with the Sony's is I really don't like how you change ISO. You can set it to custom functions and all that. And different buttons but uh, if you have it on the wheel by default you press in on the right hand d-pad and then you can change it I, I find I change it by mistake quite a bit and I'm I used to shoot Nikon's before switching to Sony I was on a d750 and a d810 and I miss having that ISO button on the top there that's really nice to have uh, if you're shooting manual anyway um, if you're shooting aperture priority I would usually have it at an auto ISO and have a minimum shutter speed set 
uh, to like 2 50th of a second so it's not something you're going to need to change a lot and this one obviously has the exposure compensation button on the top as well which is great um, i find it just as easy to change um, if not easier than the Sony's. I do like having a physical exposure compensation dial on the Sony's, but you know, I think this is probably overall a better method to be changing exposure compensation. The joystick on the back is fantastic. Just overall, the controls are really great. One thing that I'm really impressed with is the rear LCD screen. The rear LCD on the Z6 II is definitely better than my A9 Mark II, you know, in terms of like sharpness and clarity. The colors are about the same, like, you know, they're both really accurate. Um, but yeah, this is just a much sharper screen. Uh, and the viewfinder is really nice as well. Before moving on to image quality, I'll just touch on the dual card slot. So this one has one XQD card slot and one SD card slot. Uh, in my opinion, that's probably fine. Uh, I think that's, you know, I would rather have two of the same, but XQD cards are really expensive and SD cards are just easy. XQD cards are obviously much faster and much more reliable as well. So talking about image quality, I'm really impressed by the sensor actually. Um, I shot a couple of Astro photos. I put one on Instagram um, down in Rotorua and at 6400 ISO, I got a really nice, I mean, you know, it had noise in it, but it, I think it's in a real world situation you're not going to see the difference between this and like you know an a7 III or uh, something you know like an a9 they're all pretty amazing in low light and this is no exception um, i really like how it performs in low light the colors are really nice i find the white balance is pretty accurate as well if you have it on auto um, but yeah the colors are really nice and neutral i'm not too much of a fan of the term color science because you know honestly i think sure every camera has slightly different colors but when you're shooting raw if you know how to manipulate color and you know how to uh, edit your photos well then it's not really a problem i don't find any issues when i'm matching uh, canon or nikon files to my sony's if i have a second shooter that's not on sony the only cameras that i find a little bit harder to match is the fuji but i do really enjoy fuji as well i just find the colors quite different where sony canon and nikon are all pretty similar um, you know the raw files you can manipulate to look pretty close to the point where i don't think most people would be able to tell if you edited them really well now the autofocus is still a uh, up and down point for me with the z6 and z7 cameras um, you know it's fast and accurate depending on the lens use you know this 50 isn't real fast but um, you know it's not supposed to be a fast lens but the focus system itself is fast and accurate i think if you're coming from a nikon slr uh, you're going to have much less issues with focusing uh, you know this is going to hit the point much more often and much faster i'm just not a fan of how it works so if you've shot with the latest sony cameras that have real-time tracking it's just amazing and the way it works is fantastic as well um, so the way I have this one set up now is the same way Johnny has it, but I've tried all the modes as well. So like the, f the single point focusing mode, if you were just going to use that and move the focus point around with the joystick, uh, it works fine. I have no issues with that whatsoever. Low light focusing is pretty good. Probably not as good as the A9, but you know, it's plenty good enough. The only thing I have issues with is the eye focus and the tracking so the tracking does work well but it's quite a large box so it can make it tricky if you're trying to you know look through people to focus on someone on the background or something like that but it, it does work well um, and it, the other thing is just the way you have it set up you kind of have to press you have to be in wide area tracking so the whole you know the frame pretty much and then press a custom function button to activate tracking and then focus and it's just I think you would get used to it pretty fast but it is something just to note it's just not really efficient compared to the sony system like i said it's more a usability firmware thing that could be changed if nikon did it but whether they will or not i'm not sure um, but the actual performance if you were just talking about you know tracking in general and you know everyday kind of use the autofocus is great right? and you're not going to have any issues at all i don't think one thing to remember when i'm talking about the focus system is i'm really thinking about it from a wedding photographer event photographer point of view so that's probably the most intense kind of situation you're going to be using autofocus on a camera uh, if it's just everyday use or you're a hobbyist or you're doing landscape photography or even portraits or family sessions uh, most of my issues aren't going to be a big deal it's mostly just events that are really intensive and there's lots of people to focus on that's where most of my issues are coming into 
The video focus is really fantastic as well. Not much to say about it. It just works um, like you would expect it to. I never had any issues with it not working. Um, sometimes with the 50 mil, it was a bit funny, but you know, in general, it works really well. So happy with that. I noticed the image stabilization on the Z6 is definitely better than any of the Sony's I've seen. Maybe apart from the A7S III with its new active stabilization and stuff, but for just standard stabilization without the digital stabilization on just sensor stabilization only uh, it works really fantastic much better than my a7c or my a9s um, you can get a really steady shot and even do a bit of panning handheld no issues at all so yeah really happy with the image stabilization it's really fantastic i can't really comment on battery life too much because i haven't shot it at a wedding or an event or anything like that it's just been you know travel photos doing the astrophotography um, you know a week of kind of general uh, what a hobbyist would use i guess <laughs> and uh yeah the battery has been fine i haven't charged it since i've had it and it's still got about half battery life yet so i've probably only taken about maybe 200 150 photos with it i think the battery life is going to be fine i don't think anyone will have issues with that if you're on nikon and you want to stay with nikon and you're moving from slrs or maybe you have the z6 uh, the z62 is great i definitely recommend it i don't have any serious issues with it at all everything i'm comparing it to and all the kind of issues i did have minor issues uh, just comparing it to a sony system like the a9 mark ii uh, which in a lot of regards isn't really a fair comparison um, so yeah but overall i think it's a really fantastic camera great image quality really accurate fast focus really great video features great stabilization so i've still got a couple of days away in the van i'm going to shoot sunset tonight and i'm going to put the 14 to 24 through its paces uh, so I'll put a bunch of photos up and I'm not sure if there's going to be a part two or anything or it's just going to continue on from this video I guess if you're seeing this what I'm saying now it's going to be a part two but yeah that's my review of the Nikon Z6 Mark II I think it's fantastic so I'm going to carry on taking photos and I'll see you guys in the next video